Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Nat Me and today we're going to touch the anterior compartments neurovascular bundle which begins with the artery. We've already discussed the muscles. Now we're going to discuss the artery which is the anterior tibial artery of the anterior compartment. Uh, this basically lies between the various muscles of the anterior compartment and I'll tell you how. So the anterior tibial artery, first what we need to know is the origin of it. The origin of anterior tibial artery if you all remember that behind your knee, the popliteal artery terminated at the level of lower border of popliteus to become its terminal branches called the anterior tibial and the posterior tibial artery. Hence, the origin of anterior tibial artery is from the popliteal artery at the lower border of the popliteus muscle. So that's part one. Number two is that now the popliteal artery, since it is in the anterior compartment, it has to come to the anterior side of your leg because it's dry lying on the back. So, let's suppose that this is where it began, all right? This is with the anterior tibial artery. It's still lying behind the two bones, the tibia and fibula, all right? Now, how will it enter the anterior compartment? It enters through this opening. This is the interosseous membrane lying between the tibia and fibula. The interosseous membrane has an opening on its upper part close to the fibula through which your anterior tibial artery enters the anterior compartment of the leg. Part number three is what happens after. Well, it basically runs vertically till when it comes to lie between the two malleoli. What does it come across while running in the anterior compartment of the leg? That is important to know because that is the course of this artery we have the muscle tibialis anterior that basically lies on the lateral surface of tibia like that and then we have a muscle called the extensor digitorum arising from here and then we have extensor hallucis longus all right F from the medial surface of the fibula so this is the extensor hallucis longus and this is the extensor digitorum longus and this is the tibialis anterior muscle so the artery basically has a course that it first in the upper one third of your leg runs between the tibialis anterior and extensor digitorum longus muscle then in the middle third it runs between the tibialis anterior and the extensor hallucis longus as you can see and finally it basically runs between the two extensor digitorum and extensor hallucis longus between the tendons of the two all right in the lower one third of your leg and finally when it comes at the ankle where it lies between the two malleoli here it terminates here it terminates as the dorsalis pedis artery that we will talk about in the dorsum of the foot so this was all about the origin up to the termination and the course of your anterior tibial artery. Now, what are the branches of the anterior tibial artery? The anterior tibial artery gives anastomotic branches mostly. The anastomotic branches it gives, you've already studied, it gives firstly the anastomotic branches to the knee joint, and we studied it in the form of the anterior and posterior tibial recurrence. These join the anastomosis of the knee joint. Then it gives your ankle joint anastomosis branches that are called the anterior medial and anterior lateral malleolar branches for the malleolar anastomosis I also give some muscular branches to the muscles of the anterior compartment and also an important relation is that anterior tibial artery in its lower part will be crossed by the tendon of extensor hallucis longus from its lateral to its medial side all right so that was all you needed to know about the anterior tibial artery now let's discuss the deep peroneal nerve. The deep peroneal nerve, just like the anterior tibial artery, is a nerve of the compartment of the anterior side. All right. So we've already studied the deep fascia of the leg. Once again, I'm going to revise it. Know more about the course of the deep peroneal nerve. Uh, if I take a cross section from the leg, this is the tibia and the fibula, interosseous membrane between them. From the fibula run two septa, the anterior intermuscular septum and the posterior intermuscular septum that have divided your leg into anterior, lateral and posterior compartments. Any structure in the posterior compartment to enter lateral, you have to pierce the posterior intermuscular septum. Similarly, if you want to enter from your lateral to your anterior compartment, you have to pierce what? The anterior intermuscular septum. I, otherwise, you have to work with the interosseous membrane. 
So let's talk about the deep peroneal nerve. First, its origin. The deep peroneal nerve originates from the common peroneal nerve. And I've already mentioned peroneal stands for anything that is on the lateral side of your leg. So the deep peroneal nerve starts from the lateral side, means it starts in the lateral compartment. So in the lateral side of the neck of the fibula, we've already talked about when the common peroneal nerve is about to terminate at the posterolateral aspect of the neck of fibula, it terminates by dividing into a superficial peroneal nerve and a deep peroneal nerve. The superficial peroneal nerve is a nerve of the lateral compartment of your leg. However, the deep peroneal nerve is the anterior compartment's important nerve. So the deep peroneal nerve, to enter the anterior compartment, it pierces the anterior intermuscular septum. So the origin is from the common peroneal nerve at neck of fibula. It pierces what? The anterior intermuscular septum to lie in the anterior compartment. Once it enters the anterior compartment, it lies lateral to the anterior tibial artery. All right, because it's lateral, peroneal meaning lateral, tibial meaning medial. So it, the entire through its entire course, it's lying lateral to the anterior tibial artery. So third part is it also pierces the extensor digitorum longus. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. It first pierces the extensor digitorum longus and comes to lie lateral to the anterior tibial artery. And finally, it terminates in front of the ankle joint as a medial and a lateral terminal branch. So that was all for the course of the deep peroneal nerve. All right. What are the branches of the deep peroneal nerve? First, it gives muscular branches. These branches are given off to the four muscles of the anterior compartment, the tibialis anterior, the extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus, and the peroneus tertius, the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg. All right. Then it gives cutaneous branches. How does it give cutaneous branches? Well, when it ended as its medial and lateral terminal branch, lateral terminal branch, when it ends, it ends in a pseudoganglion deep to the extensor digitorum brevis. Now, this is another small muscle in your lower part of the leg. So it's just deep to it, it ends, the lateral terminal branch of the deep peroneal nerve ends as a pseudoganglion and it gives branches to the extensor digitorum brevis, all right? And it gives branches to the ankle joint. So the joints between the various bones of the ankle, the tarsal joints, all right? And the medial branch, we've already talked about it, it goes and supplies the interdigital cleft cutaneous innervation. If you all remember, we've talked about this in the beginning of the leg. You can say that the cutaneous branches supply the structures of the first interdigital cleft, uh, like joints of that as well. Moreover, it gives articular branches. What does articular branch mean? Meaning supplying the joints. So it supplies the ankle joint, the tarsal joint, interdigital cleft, wherever joints lie there, it supplies. All right. Very important clinical related to the deep peroneal nerve is that if your nerve gets injured at the neck of fibula, what happens is since it is supplying the dorsiflexors, which is the anterior compartment muscles, if those are not working, then loss of power of dorsiflexion happens resulting in foot drop. So if the deep peroneal nerve or the common peroneal nerve at the level of neck of fibula is injured, it will lead to foot drop, which is a very important condition. So that was all we needed to know about the neurovascular bundle of the anterior compartment. I really hope you understood the lecture. And in the next video, we'll begin with the lateral compartment of the leg. Thank you so much for watching.